Hi, my name is Sean Kiley. I'm an anesthesiologist uh, in the Department of Critical Care Medicine here at the University of Florida. Today we're going to talk about ultrasound guided subclavian line access. Um, typically, we use our ultrasound device for insertion of internal jugular vein central lines, uh, but uh, recently we found um, that ultrasound can be useful in uh, inserting subclavian lines. Um, a fair amount of uh, recent um, evidence to support that. I want to talk about um, pro placement and the anatomy of the chest and how you would uh, start with your procedure uh, and we'll, we'll go from there. First thing is to identify the probe that we use. Uh, we use the vascular probe uh, just as we would with the internal jugular vein. Um, and the ACC re uh, guidelines recommend uh, placing the probe um, on the clavicle itself uh, and then actually identifying the vessel as it comes out from underneath the clavicle and identifying the clavicle by uh, means of the shattering of the bone. And then as we identify the vessel, we can then slide the probe laterally to uh, get to a portion of the chest where we feel comfortable um, in starting our procedure. Typically speaking, for myself, I like to view the vessel in the short axis view. And, and, and I usually end up with the probe in the infraclavicular fossa in the area between the lateral aspect of the pectoralis major and the medial um, aspect of the anterior deltoid creating a small triangle with the cl clavicle being the superior aspect of the, of the triangle. Um, from this position we actually have a good view of both the vein and the artery. Um, also usually in this position we can visualize uh, the first rib as it uh, serves as almost a shield or a barricade between the vessels themselves and the lung parenchyma underneath. Um, from this position then we can also turn the probe and visualize the vessel in long axis if we prefer. Um, at this particular time there's no specific recommendations for long axis versus short axis views with um, an ultrasound guided technique. Uh, although uh, it can be said that there um, is better posterior visualization of the tip in long axis view. Uh, Myself, I feel more comfortable in short axis view as it somewhat mimics the uh, internal jugular vein um, uh, setup when you're doing a procedure with ultrasound and interior, interior jugular vein. So, what we can do then is um, as we insert our needle into the skin, we can then fan our probe back and forth to identify the tip. And the goal here is to identify the tip and have uh, identification of the tip throughout the the whole of the process so that we can see the tip going through the vessel, therefore uh, preventing uh, entry of the tip into the lung parenchyma. Okay, uh, some of the common pitfalls encountered in this procedure uh, have to do with the anatomy of, uh, of the insertion of the line and actually where it's being inserted into the vein. Further, we go out lateral on the thoracic cage. We actually get into more of the axillary vein than we do the, um, the subclavian vein. As you can see with the pro placement here, in that position, we often encounter issues with what we call tenting. That is to say that the vessel can collapse under uh, the pressure of the needle hitting the external wall of the vein. Uh, it's therefore very important to make sure you keep adequate visualization of the tip of your needle so you don't pass through and through the vein uh, and, and penetrate posteriorly uh, into the lung parenchyma. Uh, secondly, it's common in this procedure uh, when starting out this far laterally for the wire to actually travel instead of going into the downward position to travel up into the neck. One of the ways that we have um, discovered to combat this is to actually as the wire is uh, being inserted take the ultrasound probe and push it just superior to the, uh, to the clavicle right at um, the junction of the subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein applying some pressure uh, therefore uh, forcing the wire to stay on its trajectory towards the superior vena cava. Uh, and in this fashion we can also, if we let off a little bit of pressure, visualize on the ultrasound screen whether or not the wire is in the internal jugular vein. 